So a lot of times we'll talk about energy savings. One of the easiest things to do to reduce energy costs inside a uh, steam using building is to check for steam trap losses or steam, failed open steam traps. All traps will fail open, doesn't matter which trap that you use, eventually they will start leaking steam by. So this shows you different types of traps um, at different operating conditions, 15 PSI, 50 PSI, 100 and different sizes, so um, like the numbers change from year to year depending on the fuel costs. But the point being is that just one, sim one leaking trap can cost a plant anywhere from $500 to $7,000 $7, a year, depending on its size. So if you find a leaking trap and the customer kind of balks at the price of installed, well you just tell them that that one trap, if you, f if you replace it now, you'll make your money back in no time. It's, it's, it's a no-brainer, as they say. There's no reason not to replace a leaking steam trap. And one of the worst things I've ever seen was uh, um, steam traps before the boiler feed tank. So that, instead of fixing the steam traps, they put a steam trap on the condensate side before the feed tank, which is no, <laughs> don't do that. So how do we test steam traps? Well, I use two different devices. I have a um, thermal gun, so I just everybody knows this. It's, uh, I use the Fluke HVAC Pro. I've had this one for about five years, and it's starting to show its age, but it works. It does a great job, so I test the temperature of the trap. But I also use one of these devices, and it comes in a very handy case. The only problem is if you're flying somewhere. I just came back from... Moose Factory, I did a trap survey way up in near James Bay. <laughs> Believe it or not, the, there's a hospital up there that has steam heating. And when you have this, something that looks like a gun in your baggage. <laughs> I got to the whole, uh, I had to fly from Ottawa to Toronto, Toronto to Timmins. I got to Timmins, opened my bag just to see if everything is intact. There's a little uh, card from CATSA, the Canadian Air Transit, Air Travel Safety Authority, telling me that they opened up my bag because, you know, kind of looks like uh, a gun. Anyways, um, so this is made by UE Systems. It's called the Ultra Probe 2000. So it looks just like that. It's exact same model. Um, Ultra uh, UE Systems is a company located in New York State. So with this probe, you can check for compressed air. So if you this, imagine this is a mechanical room. You put your headphones on, and the headphones are... They look kind of funny because they're designed to fit under a, a hard hat. So that's why they have a Velcro on top and the, the bar holding them together is in the back. So it goes on like so. And just plug it in and they're noise cancelling. So they reduce the noise level by 30 decibels. It's like going in a soundproof chamber if you put these on. So with um, this, um, this probe you can check for compressed air leaks. So I can do compressed air audits and it has a handle so if you drop it by accident you won't lose your six thousand dollar device. So it's uh, with this you can wave it around and check for air leaks. So if you have a building say um, on Booth Street they have the, the large government buildings they're still on compressed air so you can check for air leaks. But you can also check for steam trap leaks. So if you replace that probe with the contact probe this one here, I will come up to the trap and uh, press against the outlet, typically on the threads of the outlet pipe, and check for the operation. And you can see, if you come up close, you can check. There's a, there's a gauge on the back that lets you see the sound that, it, that is generated. But one of the neat features of this device is that it has extension probes. So if your building is already tagged, a lot of times with um, trap surveys, they want tags and um, they want it to be tagged and tested. So they want identification tags installed after each steam trap. So that way, when I do the Excel spreadsheet, I can put the tag number on the on the sheet. And what this extension probe does, if the tags are already in place, then I don't have to climb up on ladders. And it just um, not only is that a safety benefit, but it just speeds things up. I don't have to waste time going up and down the ladder. I can get to testing all the steam traps. It'd be hard to do.
Well, I guess I won't make it on TV. I'm too slow. So there we go. So that's what the with the extension probe, I can reach up and extends my arm by three feet. So that way I don't have to, like I said, it makes it my job a lot easier. And when we tag and test, we hang these little tags. So these are um, printed, engraved with whatever you want on them. If you don't want our name, we can put Wiles Lego on there. We could put Auto One Mechanical or whatever company you work for. And we'll just hang these on the trap. And that way it gives you an identification. So that's what a typical trap audit would look like. Tag number, this relates to these tags here. And then I'll say the location, so low pressure header in room B28, supply to domestic hot waters and so on. So I just, I'll look around and see if there's any identif identifiable numbers that I can put and uh, allow the customer to see where the trap is. Then here's the manufacturer, you got Armstrong, Spirex, Sarko and so on, Dunham Bush. Model number, uh, whatever the model number is, the size. The application, what the trap does, is it a drip, is it a process, is it on a coil, heat exchanger, unit heater and so on. Height from the floor, this is not a precise measurement, I'm just, well, if it's seven feet up, I know to look up, if it's one feet up, one foot up, I mean, then I know to look down. It's just a guide, so whenever, whoever look at, at the report knows to look up or look down or look straight ahead, so that, that's just, a, it's just an estimate. Observation, so we have all the different meanings of what my numbers mean. So one means the trap is okay. Uh, nine means trap is out of service. And uh, the up, uh, upstream pressure, so that way we can check to see that they have the right trap for the application. And there's a bunch of other little uh, indications on there. And then I'll just put comments like needs steam trap upstream of pressure regulator, undersized drip pocket. So I look for different things and try to uh, help out the customer more than just looking at steam traps. And then the uh, written report looks something like that. So the, the name of the game is trying to reduce cost, trying to f reduce efficiency. And while I'm on the topic of efficiencies, Embridge or Union Gas, depending on where you're located, but in Ottawa most of the time it's Embridge, they have the Steam Saver program. They still have it in in place today. They've had it since uh, 2000, back when the uh, Kyoto Protocol, now we have the Paris Protocol, so back then they had the Kyoto Protocol. The Ontario Energy Board mandated that um, companies and um, institutions were to reduce energy consumption, so they, they asked the um, electrical utilities, they asked the gas utilities to create these incentives. So when you do a trap survey, say I charge a thousand bucks for the trap survey, you send a copy of the invoice back to Enbridge, they'll give you a $500 check or they'll give your customer a $500 check. So they give incentives to help you reduce gas consumption. It sounds kind of funny that the gas company wants you to use less gas, but they actually have these incentives to help you use less gas. And they have uh, a couple of gentlemen that I know very well in the Enbridge they have um, Luigi Pisani, who does the commercial side. He helps with energy losses, not only for steam, he does for rooftop units or anywhere there's gas losses. So any, uh, Luigi does the commercial buildings or institutions, schools and so on, hospital. Then Michael Fukuri does more industrial. So uh, like Ron was mentioning, the industrial sector in this area has taken quite a hit over the years. So Michael is starting to branch out further away from Ottawa, so, um, but he's still heavily involved in energy savings. And they give incentives on other things. So if you uh, install an economizer on your boiler or an economizer on your uh, rooftop unit, there's a whole bunch of different um, uh, incentives for energy savings. So if you look up on their website, energy on the Enbridge website or the Union Gas website, and also Ottawa Hydro, they're offering incentives as well for electrical uh, usage reductions, of course. Eric, just before you get on, what do we listen for when we're testing trips? Um, well, you have to know how the trap operates. So it helps to know what uh, a trap sounds like in the normal, um, when it's in the normal, um, state when it's in 
properly functioning. So that's why we go through how all the different traps operate. So the thermodynamic is on and off. Float trap is kind of, uh, sounds kind of like a wave. If you pick up a seashell at the ocean and you listen to the sound, the trap, the sound that the trap makes, an F and T trap makes kind of sounds that it kind of a gushing sound. But when it's leaking by, it'll make um, a very staticky sound, a high, a high pitch sound. It depends also on the, the pressure at the trap. So the higher the pressure, the worse the sound. It can be a high pitched, a squealing sound. So it's just, uh, you, you, it's something that you gain uh, hearing for over the many years. I've done them for um, over 20 years testing steam traps. So I've kind of get the hang of it, but for someone new at it, it's, uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to. It's not something that's easy, easily done, but you have to know how each trap operates. So if you know how a bucket trap operates, you know how all these other different types of trap operates, it helps you understand what to listen for when you're actually testing. And uh, it also helps to test take the temperature as well. So that's why I do both. And um, on the UE Systems website, they have tutorials on helping you use their equipment because they want you to buy their equipment, of course. So they help you uh, use, um, they, they give you kind of guidelines on how, what to listen for, how to use their stuff. But they don't, they don't only make this one, they also make one that has a, an onboard computer. You can spend close to $15,000 on one of these testers. They have an onboard computer. It's, the thing is massive. It's got a screen and a USB port. They also have a little one that almost the same size as this. So they go from very small to big to, um, this one is analog. They also have a, one with a digital readout. So it's just letter, capital U, capital E systems, if you want to find out more. What's the, what's the U, E systems. And it's not UE Electric, because there's also a company called UE Electric. It's UE Systems. You just Google that, and you'll see their website right away. And the one that I'm using here is called the UP2000. Uh, the fancy one is the UP9000. They also have a UP10000, and well, they're always coming out with new models. Um, good website. They really explain a lot, because those things you can test for more than just steam traps. Like I mentioned, you can test for compressed air leaks. You also test for arcing inside an electrical panel. You can test for bearing wear. I, I don't know how to do all that because I'm a steam trap guy. I just use them for steam traps and compressed air. But if you know how to use the others, if you're familiar with the other applications, you can use them for different applications as well.